Hi there, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. I'm doing something new and bringing back something old. It's been a while since I did any Forge a Character videos where I'm time-lapsing what I'm drawing on screen, but I also collected a few questions from you guys that I'd like to answer. And uh, really, I got so many responses, so many good questions that I'm probably gonna make this uh, more frequent or maybe even like a regular segment on this channel. In this video today, I wouldn't even call this a sketch stream. I would downgrade it to a doodle stream, doodle time-lapse. I've been a little bit out of practice. Most of the client work that I've been doing in the last few weeks is not this kind of character concept sketching. So I basically just create a few different shapes and eventually get around to creating a character that I like to call the dog -a pillar. So stick around for that. So the first question is from AJ Morrow and he asks, what do you think about being a prideful artist? Is it okay to have a sense of pride from your art without going overboard? And I would say that I think it's really important to have self-esteem in your work. Uh, as much as it's really important to always have a student's mindset and always uh, be willing to improve and view things as a beginner, right? And be willing to kind of put the extra effort into improving your work and, and making yourself better and realizing that there's always room to grow. Uh, many of the best and most successful artists are ones who are constantly trying to improve. I think having self-esteem and being able to be satisfied in what you make is really important, especially in a world full of social media and seeing the best of the best being just cranked out and it just appears in front of us, right? We don't see how long it took for someone to get there. It's easy to feel inadequate. And so being able to have that sense of steam is important, I think. Pride, I guess, is maybe a different word for it. I, I don't think it's especially useful for someone to be arrogant about their artwork um, because there's always something that we can improve. Geocrypton asks, is Voltron chibi? No. Next up, Kano asks, what is your favorite color or color combination? This is a little bit tough. Uh, if you look at my portfolio page, the one that I recently put up, there's so many different colors that I love and it really, the way that colors interact with each other is always more important to me than specific colors. That being said, purple is definitely my favorite color, and my favorite color combination is its complement, which is yellow. And funny enough, my wife's favorite color is yellow, and so purple and yellow complementing each other, definitely my favorite combo. And you'll see that in my character, the Wanderlumen, who's a mascot on this channel. Our fourth out of 10 questions, I should have said that from the beginning, we're doing 10 questions. Deathcrave asks, I'd like to know about how long a character sketch takes you or how many sketches or poses of a character you do on average before you feel it is complete or finished. Well, as you can kind of see with the drawing I'm doing here, even though I'm very much out of practice with this dog -a pillar, it takes a, a few tries, right? And it all depends on how much you already know about a character or how much you've done to work on before, but I would always say the more the better before you get too maybe diluted or too out there or you've done too many versions, right? That's uh, honestly, I think doing at least five or 10 versions or sketches of a character just to get a, a feel and understanding of them doing different poses and from different angles is definitely a good idea. Number five, Matt Does Things asks, do you think that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a good movie? Uh, I've never heard of it. I'm sure it's okay. Number six, Alicia Chin asks, how did you learn to draw facial expressions and what methods work for you? How would you vary the method to fit a particular art style? I think facial expressions is a really big topic and so I can't break it all down here, but just a few quick high points. I think first of all, it's important to be able to draw the features of the face well and have a good understanding of them. And also to have a little bit of a shorthand for each facial feature, just as you're exploring expressions. And then also I think that of course, exaggeration, right? Is an important part of facial expressions. But I, another thing is gesture, right? We talk about gesture a lot in poses and life drawing the overall arcs of like a full body, but it's the same in the face too. So seeing if you can find overall directions or shapes that you can make with the face and in the face as you're exaggerated and, and, and pushing those facial expressions. And also going back to the last question, it always helps to redraw 
that same expression next to it. Draw it once and then push it further, right? See if there's an element that you can push further, do more with, exaggerate more. Number seven, Miss N asks, do you watch any anime? Oof, I would say that my tastes in anime are mostly old school, uh, like your your Totoro's and your Ponyo's and, and uh, Osama Tezuka. I have tried and sort of failed to really get into many anime series. Um, people recommend them and I, I just get put off by, by certain, not just, you know, people recommending like, oh, you've got to, like that, sometimes that kind of gets me down, but there's, there's a certain element of almost every time I've tried to get into something, there's some amount of objectification of especially like underage characters, which is just, it puts such a bad taste in my mouth and there's like no good way to justify that. And so I really love Eastern art styles overall. Uh, of course, Nintendo is one of my favorite companies, favorite design philosophies, right? But as far as series or like shonen things or, or episodic stuff, I just can't really get into it. And I know a bunch of people are gonna say, well, not all anime and you should try this one. I'll, I'll keep kind of trying, but it's just, it's not super my thing. I know a lot of other people are. You know my style, right? If you look at my portfolio, you know what I'm sort of into more. Number eight, Ken Saunders asks, who is your favorite character you've ever drawn? Which is probably the hardest question, most impossible one to answer, right? I'll change your question for you only because I do so many, draw so many characters and it's, I love the idea of characters overall and, and you know, what I like at one point is going to change at another point as far as my own work, especially that as it improves. I'll say that the character I'm most excited about excited about drawing right now would be Jacqueline from our game Shackleton. Uh, there's a lot of things that I've sort of improved in her design recently, and it's just there's a balance to it that I'm really excited about, and I'm, I'm excited about drawing her more and more, uh, especially for our game. So uh, that's a really important element is you know, being excited and passionate about drawing a character. So I'd say Jacqueline right now. Number nine, Eddie M asks, about how often do you reevaluate your art style? Is it something that you want to evolve constantly or you find a style that works for you and stick with it for a while? I would say all the time, Eddie. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a constantly changing thing. And art style is one of those things where you think you're making an intentional choice to make your art look a certain way but it almost always is like something that can be traced back to you, no matter how much you're trying to do something new or hide that it's you making it, right? Unless you're you're like a really good ghost drawer, basically, uh, sort of chameleon into someone else's style. But when you're making your own personal work, it's always going to kind of resemble your work. And so there's no worries necessarily that you're going to be lost in that process or it's not going to be yours anymore. And so continuing to improve and learn new things and push yourself is definitely the better angle to go rather than to preserve a specific uh, look or, or you know, style frozen in time. Um, there's a really good quote from Brian McDonald uh, about writing where he's just talking about how people will try to make their work sort of meta or or show the author in the work and it's a very egotistical thing to do right and it's it's because the author's trying to make themselves noticeable in the work instead of trying to make the work good which i think is a really that's something i've been thinking a lot about when it comes to style and of course i've made videos before about finding your artistic voice instead of your style because style is so secondary to the why you're making something and finally question 10 Benjamin Vanderpool asks about the software Krita and if that's a good piece of software to use and if there's a specific piece of software that the industry is using. Well, I think you kind of answered this question on your own, Benjamin, when you said that you're using it and it works just fine for you. I think that people generally get a little too caught up in what the best software is, right? Obviously, it's good to have uh, the right tools uh, I've never personally used Krita, but if you're saying it works well for you, that's great. And I've seen other people love it as well. Um, as far as things like, like looking at the views on YouTube, for instance, the, the videos that I, that do best for me and for other people are always the ones that are like, they're about the gear and the software. And 
for me, it's like the Procreate videos. And that's great. Obviously, it's good to know those things and to have a good tool, but people get a little too caught up on the technology, not necessarily doing the work for themselves, but maybe just as a distraction. And the skill level involved is always going to be more important than the software. And as far as the industry goes, working with 2D, there isn't the same kind of compatibility issue that comes with things like 3D. Some people are using Maya, some people are using 3ds Max, and there's like workflow and file compatibility issues if you're in a studio, right? Uh, but with 2D, you know, most people are using Photoshop just because it's kind of the oldest, but that doesn't really mean anything. As long as you can produce images, you're gonna be good. Uh, Nicholas Cole, who I've interviewed on this channel before, uses Procreate exclusively for all of his studio work. And he's done things like, you know, he, he does illustration for books and stuff, but he also did all of his concept art for the Spyro trilogy uh, for, for Activision and Toys for Bob, all in Procreate. And I do the same with Procreate as well. I don't really use Photoshop anymore myself. So as long as you can create a JPEG, right? Or, you know, some kind of layered file, you should be fine. Thank you so much to everyone who asked questions. There were a lot more and I see people continuing to ask questions, so I'm probably going to make this a regular feature on the channel. The format of the previous Forge a Character videos were kind of, I mean, getting repetitive, at least for me. They weren't interesting to keep saying, and I used reference, you know, these animals, and I used a multiply layer, and the oval sketch brush, and I mean, those videos exist already, but I think answering questions is a lot more interesting for everyone overall. So leave your questions in the comments below, and I'll definitely make sure to include them in upcoming videos. Hope you enjoyed the exploration of the dog pillar here on screen. I uh, didn't necessarily finish the art because I got him to a place where at least the idea was there. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos are made available. My comic Parcel Stitch in Time is available now. You can get it in the Gumroad links below. My Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch are all Bagel Denizen, and you'll see those in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating!